how I would protect Sam Solik and so many of his followers that I know have connected with this young man as he's such a huge sensation, really coming out of nowhere, right? I saw this guy just maybe within a year ago and just watched him explode on the scene and here he is today. So I wanna do a <clears throat> very special video on this because Sam Solik, the reason why he's so loved and everyone loves him so much is because he's so freaking laid back and cool with the hair and the hat and he's jacked, right? He's only 21 year old guy. So let's go into this. I'm gonna go into this for you guys because if I could show exactly as the anabolic doc, how I could protect him, there's gonna be so many guys that are following him that are gonna really be like him and look like him and mimic him. And, and again, there's no criticism here, guys. There's no criticism. So let me go into this. Sam's a 21-year-old guy on the fitness scene <clears throat> that was just a regular guy in America. I think he's from Ohio and was a diver, thin guy, good-looking guy. And then he's transformed into this massive guy where, you know, up to like 240, tons of muscle, right? We see the acne and this and that. And he's just transformed himself. And it reminds me of kind of a young, um, rich piano. You know, where, hey, what's going on, guys? This is what I do. And he's so lovable, but he's so, like, amazing to watch and look at in his training because you just want to be like him. He looks just jacked. He has millions of followers, and this is for um, all you guys, really more than just one person himself. But, again, how I could help. So <clears throat> we know Sam hasn't discussed his anabolic steroid use, and I'm not here to ever criticize anyone, but I think it's quite clear from his peers, including Ronnie Coleman, Greg Desset, Jeff Cavalier, athlete and X guy, that his massive size gained so quick, such a young age. Of course, unfortunately, that severe acne that we're gonna talk about in the ABCDs, how he cleared up with Accutane and he talks about it. You know, we're spelling out some stuff here that certainly even for a young guy with tons of health reserve, we could start getting into trouble uh, with health issues. And again, as I am a father of a 17 year old boy and a 26 year old girl, they haven't decided to go on that route, but I'm around a lot of men that I've worked with that have, even from teenage years up until men that are in their mid, late 20s that have just started utilizing steroids and <clears throat> I know would like to have an appreciation for what will happen from a psychological and a physical um, standpoint. So I think the only way to do this is for me to run the ABCDs this is what I do on the Anabolic Doc app is to organize everything for all you guys, A, B, C, D, so we can do it and we could just pinpoint that as if I had Sam as a patient. He's not a patient. This is just hypothetical, but there are so many men like Sam. They're 21 and obviously going down this route. And I think if we do it right, can you do it right? Can young men do steroids? and stay as protected as possible. This is 100% harm reduction. I don't do this in my medical practice as far as, hey man, there's a, there's a way to do it. You can do it safe. Here's the regimen. That's not what I'm going after here, guys. What I'm going after is true harm reduction that when you look at something that's happening, like drug use, pet use, <clears throat> that how can you educate people ethically and a progressively as a leading physician, a leader, right? Healer to show you something that I've seen behind my eyes for you to see for yourself. It's just straight education. And you know what? God, here in America versus some other places in the world, 
we are lucky, guys. But for all you other guys in the world, you have internet, you're a fan of mine, you're on the YouTube channel, this is for all you guys. First off, we have to have personalized medicine for Sam or any man that's gonna be involved in this world of steroids. I think if Sam could open up and talk about steroids, it's gonna be awesome because all these guys are gonna really, really get an understanding perspective from exactly what you're going through, Sam, because you have so much power, right? You have all the social media power. You kind of remind me of a young, rich piano, not being a wise guy and saying, look how rich I ended up, but rich piano was loved because he used to just put the camera on and just say, hey guys, what's going on, guys? He'd sit there on his kitchen table or under that pier right in California, just talking true about steroids and stuff that was running through his mind. Sam, this is you, brother. You're, you're talking about stuff running through your mind. You're not even scripted. And the guys, they don't beat you up for it. You just have this huge following, man. So you have so much power in the world. I really, really would hope you would come forth and, and involve yourself with talking about the pets sooner or later, but that's up to you. So we're gonna just assume you're on some pets, you don't feel comfortable about talking about it, so let's start with the first part, which is gonna be A, you need personal history and physical exam and some studies done by a qualified healthcare provider. My anabolic doc app really mimics everything that a man could have that I actually have done and developed these protocols for about 20 years. Some of the top bodybuilders, strongmen, powerlifters, right down to average guys, even executive guys in their 50s and 60s and 70s. So we start off with A. Hemoglobin A1C is the first piece of the ABCDs, but in this case, because he's 21, although I know he was dirty bulking, probably doesn't have any glycemic index issues with prediabetes or diabetes in guys. We're not gonna launch off into insulin use potentially and growth factors and all that stuff, having adverse impacts on glycemic index. We're just gonna kind of leave it out of this one. So for A, I thought for this young man who's probably on steroids, we know is on some steroids, Sam, we know, it's okay that you're gonna have a shutdown of the hypothalamus pituitary testicular axis. It's going to lead, if it hasn't fully already, to anabolic steroid-induced hypogonadism. You could put that in Google and you could see this is really a true medical organic issue now. It's being shut down from steroids with or without PCT. And I'm gonna go into that because I think PCT has a role, it has limited evidence data to support really because no one's really cared because there's really no money uh, from industrial size, modern mega loot money for freaking PCT because it's all generic. That's gonna probably change. Times are a changing because it's so big, look at Sam's followers, and he's only 21. So you know you're gonna get shut down. So we're gonna to have to talk about, can you come off? Blasting cruising versus just coming off itself. Now, I want you to come off. I want you to come off, and here's how I think it can be done, <clears throat> because there is some data for it, but anecdotally, what I've seen behind my eyes for decades is HCG is the main drug of choice, guys. I have a lot of videos on it. No question, even when you're on, this is just anecdotal, guys. When you're on the gear, depending on what gear you're on, you know, trend is always kind of over here for me because trend is so massively, nothing's free, guys. Something works really well, you're gonna pay for it from your body, your shutdown, your testicles, not to mention acne and all these other things, heart, kidney, and all this stuff. We're gonna get into that. But if, if a guy could run some light cycles and just eat clean, train really hard, is it possible that you could live on HCG? Maybe 500 
two or three times a week, maybe even 250 to, to kind of stabilize. I know guys have done it. It's a lot of work. Definitely have to consider the estrogenic effects of adding HCG to estrogenic regimens like testosterone esters, not to mention other drugs. But guys tell me for years and years and years that if they can do it when they're on, not to mention off a taper, a transition period, they feel it helps them. But there will be a point, gentlemen, there will be a point that you do one cycle with or without PCT, probably going to come off uh, two months, three months. Who wants to come off? That's why blasting and cruising comes into play. So you look at Sam, is he ever really going to be able to come off? I hope he can be honest and say, guys, you got to come off. Now, Rich used to do that and be like, I'm coming off and I'm using 5,000 units of HCG a day. I mean, is that really going to be something where you're really off or there's really health benefits to that? We just don't know. But utilizing some type of regimen with HCG and possibly Clomid, but Clomid is tricky because when you're on androgens and your brain is completely shut off and you're using a selective estrogen receptor modulator like clomiphene citrate or n clomiphene it's not tamoxifen guys that's for sensational gonochromastia maybe for a limited time period more for trt guys you you want to protect your brain from getting shut down is there a way can you possibly mitigate against that with hcg or or something like FSH, HMG analogs, or LH analogs, there's Bravel, Ovidril, there's different analogs. R, they're small R, recombinant, FSH, R, LH. You can see they're out there in the fertility world. I don't like gonadorelin. Guys and Sam, I don't like it. Not that he's into it because the anti-aging places have used it because they haven't had, they haven't been able to get real HCG, which is pregnil, it's expensive and they can't get it. So they've, they've supplanted that with gonadorelin, which is a GNRH analog. I don't like it. It's above the brain. I'm scared of it because of the utilities of similar drugs for chemical castration for prostate, metastatic prostate cancer, and even chemical castration for prisoners and all this kind of craziness in the world. I think one false move on that stuff, you're going to end up shutting down your brain that there's really no way to come back from if you just take it too much versus HCG and HMG, even combinations of clomiphene citrate for fertility. We have tons of data. We have decades of, of anecdotal data utilizing, and this is how I keep it tight. So I think using some HCG while you're on cycle and definitely using higher dose when you're off a week or so later, depending on your regimen of steroids, to keep to, to stimulate your testicles to produce natural testosterone and wean down over the course of maybe six weeks, the old school HCG, maybe with clomiphene citrate, but it causes depression and it causes a lot of estrogen, a real big bump in estrogen when you're using that HCG with clomiphene citrate. And again, I don't like tamoxifen in there. You could use AIs too, guys, when you're young as hell. But is this part, is this first part with axis shutdown, is it, is it possible that you could get off with this regimen and preserve your natural doubt? It's not for me now, man. I, there's there's going to be a lot of guys that are going to follow Sam and they're going to follow him and suit. And they're going to basically do as he is and as he does. They're going to use androgens, guys. Let's not be prima donnas about this. And they're going to follow this. And there's, they're, only, they're so young that there's going to be a point down the road that they're going to say, it's not for me. Sam, dude, it's not for me, bro. Good luck. I'm out of here. And I'm just moving on, moving forward. So can you preserve a man's endogenous testosterone. That's why I have to go into this A for axis shutdown. And we just don't know based on clinical studies, but I have enough anecdotal support that men will like to do it and they'll do it by feel and working with a physician like me. 
through my app with our, our affiliated nurse practitioners. It's coming in 2024. Here we are, guys. We're working on this. I think it's going to be possible. I think the progressiveness, I just think we're getting there because look at Sam. And when guys like you guys are going to be running the world as Congress men and women, you're all going to have a history of using steroids. So you're not, it's not going to be damned in shame and you're going to be more open about it. And I think he is and it's going to happen. So using coming off Sam, you got to have time to come off and you got to show guys it's cool and it's acceptable. Hey guys, you can come off. You got to come off with or without the PCT. Now, other drugs I throw in there is maybe, I don't like Tren. It's probably Tren playing a role when you have that big hard look so strong. No kidding. But more like maybe Masteron and Primo Proviron, maybe some of the, the, the DECA and stuff, the old school stuff. And of course, the orals are always going to be limited because they're so potentially toxic. Now, so that's the issue with, with time off and the axis shutdown. Fertility versus endogenous androgen. Sure, guys could, could, could come off everything and blast HCG with Clomid if they could take it and get fertile. It takes months, though, for a lot of you guys. And I know some of you guys are not buying that steroids and testosterone actually shut guys down. Because you look at some guys like Ronnie and stuff, and he seems like I have a bunch of kids, and I'm not going to go into that. So I do it as my day job is working, reversing fertility issues with men that have used steroids, even just guys on TRT. And this is not just TRT going on here, guys, let's be honest. So that's something important to understand your fertility and really watch my videos. Get in the app, work with other people, work with me in there, and understand what's going on from that fertility endogenous uh, production aspect of being shut down. Next on a acne, you see that you see that Sam had really severe uh, pus, uh, pustular nodular acne, and he said he used Accutane. Guys, Accutane is no joke. I'm going to tell you the truth on Accutane because I've prescribed it for a bunch of guys, but I don't feel comfortable doing it. I usually let dermatology doctors do it. Your, your LFTs will go up. And I've researched this and I've looked at this. So sure, if you're going to do Accutane, you should not be on any oral steroids. Really no other strong steroids. You can be on TRT. I've done it with, with doctors on TRT, even though some doctors are like, well, you can't do TRT and Accutane. Bullshit. It's not true. There's a transient increase for about 15% of patients on Accutane, you gotta be on Accutane for four to six months because it doesn't work in a month or two. So when you're running the Accutane, you wanna get it from a real certified doctor at a good place and you wanna be watched because it's all rare stuff. Yeah, the LFTs go up, those transient LFTs, Billy Rubin and, and Alc Foss shouldn't go up unless you have an issue and the liver really, I've done a lot of research on this. I've looked, I've talked to hepatology, liver experts, dermatology doctors. Most, the transient increase of the, of the LFTs when Accutane is stopped reverts. Is there damage from the Accutane on the liver? Very unusual, basically not, doesn't usually happen, but that's not, we're not looking at data for a subset of men that are on steroids, not to mention oral anabolic steroids. I've seen very rare, most guys know not to do Accutane with orals or to even run orals for that long. But guys will use orals, Anadrol, Dynabol, it's cheap, effective. There's a bunch of other ones out there, you know, Winstrol. But you know, you have to monitor all this stuff and don't just, whoa, you know, he's, we know it's going to look bad when I'm on. And my thought for you guys, you young guys, you're smart. I just want smart guys. You're young. We're all pretty wild when we're young. You get older, you get a little less wild, right? Because the, the wisdom kicks in and your parents love you and they're worried for this. What does Sam's mother think? She, was, she didn't want him to get creatine. Now look at him. Wow. None of my business. But when you, when you look at your your health reserve guys your health reserve when you're 21 your health reserve is through the roof 
you're chewing into it where later it's going to come out. This is where I get into the heart and the kidney and stuff. So we're going to get right into that right now. So we're out of A, we're going to go into B. B is blood pressure. Now, blood pressure, If this is where my progressive thought comes from, and I've seen it for years. What if, what if men, young men, do go on steroids against my advice, against parents' advice, anyone else's advice, but what if they do it? He's 21, he's an adult. What if he does it and you maintain your vital signs? Blood pressure, what should it be at that age? Less than 120 and less than 80, nothing more than in the mid-130s, something like 130-something diastole over mid-80s. If you think you're going to live much higher than that, even while well, it's only for a short time when I run the cycle for a few months, there is where your heart and kidney, not to mention brain protection, that's where you are chewing into your health reserve. You'll never feel it because you're young. This is where we know bodybuilders have gotten hurt years later with progressive silent disease of the heart and the kidney. Let me keep going. Diet. You know, he dirty bulked, right? And guys really got on him for that. But he's so goddamn young. Guys could do all this stuff. But obviously, I'm sure he cleaned up his diet. And I'm not a diet guy. But diet's going to be key. Real bodybuilders, the pro guys, I know they criticized him for that. Like, what are you doing, dude? Greg DeSent, what are you doing? Like, we know guys your age are going to use some steroids. But what are you doing? I mean, Greg lost it, right? The dirty bulking and the garbage and all the food. Come on. So high-intensity interval training, right? Stay lean and mean. Protect your organs. Sodium, I'm going to say it for a million times. Sodium for the heart, for the, for the heart itself, for the kidney. You just have to understand that carbs, obviously, clean carbs. You need carbs. Protein, I'll give you some numbers. Less than two grams per kilogram body weight is what I, I've talked in the nephrology doctors. I think probably young guys could go up to that. If they're anabolic, they're going to need it probably. But anything over that, it's it's not working for you. That that is has been proven, and you're just going to have damage where you're deaminating in your 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 kidneys. Not to mention the heart and the hypertension. It's it's just damaging your health reserve silently. You're never going to know this. And next, no, I don't want to see NSAIDs. Motrin, Aleve, you're in pain, your shoulder hurts. I guess you could use a little bit of it, maybe once or twice a week, but I've seen this perfect storm where guys, bodybuilders for years, on the gas, on steroids, forget the genetics, some of these guys have obviously had bad issues with genetics, and that's another huge moon in, in the lines up. They were just eating a lot, they were massive, they were just uh, taking non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs, not even like chiclets, but they were just eating them and just living on them, and they were hypertensive with way too much protein. If you guys could listen to what I just said, that's the crux right there. Now, protective regimens. This is the real modern harm reduction. ARB, telmasartan, that's an angiotensin receptive blocker, ACE inhibitors too, nabivalol, maybe hydrochlorothiazide. You have to understand the mechanism of action of the hypertension from the diet, from your genes, from the steroids, directly on the kidney, on the vasoconstriction, and then the edema. That's where these regimen and these medicines, this is why I have it all in the app for you guys, you really could nail down and protect your vital signs. Now, imagine this study. You have a control group with someone that is on some PEDs and, and you're, you're, you're controlling vital signs perfectly with diet exercise, which so is the other group. Then you give the protective drugs, the, these my ABCDs, if you will, and the versus control arm. And then what happens years later? You'd have to run it for years because there's so much health reserve that you're not going to see anything in the beginning. I guess you could look at it as far as microscopic damage and cardiac myocardial remodeling damage and LVH and enlargement of the heart. You'll see that, right? That could You could see that within a year or so, sometimes even less, but mostly you don't see it because no one's looking at it. Now, next is close monitoring for renal protection. 
You, so not just doing your damn labs, guys, and oh, look at my labs and having some guru look at it. Have a real nurse practitioner or a great doctor that we're working with look at it and really with experience. This is a whole clinical subset now of internal medicine, testosteronology and understanding men on steroids because you have to look at the inter internal medicine on steroids. So a comprehensive metabolic panel, really understanding what is your creatinine to your B1 ratios with the protein, without the protein, with the muscle, hypertension, cystatin C. You can get all this on the Anabolic Doc app. Your analysis, if you have trace protein or one plus protein, you're heading into danger zone of kidney disease early where it's silent. I'm telling you, FSGS. You have to get also, the, that's the urinalysis, possibly. Can we use, this is the real theoretical stuff, sodium glucose co-transporter 2s like dapagliflozone. Can you look at this, Farsiga? Can you use it? It's already cleared for chronic kidney disease and heart failure protection, not to mention diabetes. Can it help protect? I know there are some pro bodybuilders that are on this exact mechanism. No names mentioned because of the potential for protecting the kidneys as they're on steroids, even though it's not been shown in any studies, not even case studies. This is gonna be the future right here. Focal segmental glomerular sclerosis and co congestive heart failure, not to mention coronary artery disease protection. If you understand the data, looking at steroids with reduced ejection fractions, that's where the heart is not pumping. We see that. We see that from some of the guys, the big experts in the world that are interested in cardiology and, and steroid use. You can see that that they've shown the reductions in the, the ejection fraction. This really is gonna be pre-heart disease or heart failure with preserved ejection fraction. These medications, the sodium glucose co-transporter 2s, they're already being developed for people that are not on steroids that have this mainly from hypertension and just getting older. So please guys, B is blood pressure. Let's move on to C. Again, B and C are gonna be really tied in together. Cardiac, cholesterol, ECG, echo, calcium score. That's my usual C. You wanna get a baseline lipid. Does, do, do you or Sam, do you have any family history? That's that personal fingerprint, personalized medicine. Do you have family history for or early premature heart disease? Get a full lipid panel, it's right on the app. You can get advanced lipid panel, which is becoming less advanced and more casual and more usual. LP little a, apolipoprotein B. Understand the highly sensitive CRP. Again, if you're 21 years old, you don't need a calcium score. It's, could Sam get a calcium score? I mean, it, it's not really dangerous radiation, but he's 21. What are the chances that he's gonna have any atherosclerosis on a calcium score? It's very close to zero. It's guaranteed zero, 100% it's gonna be zero. I mean, it's, it's gonna be one out of 150, 200,000, or even close to one out of a million that's like he's so young, unless he has some family history that's severe for familial hypercholesterolemia. Even if he does, you're not gonna see any evidence that it's 21. But what I think he could get, thinking about the blood pressure, I think he could get an echocardiogram. I'd love to see an echo to really understand the, 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 the diastolic dysfunction, looking at the valves, really understanding the motion of the heart and measuring the thickness of the heart and saying that's your baseline. Because when you grow this guy right here with the steroids, your muscle to the cardiac, skeletal muscle, they have cardiac muscle. It's gonna be, that's the problem. In the future, we wanna have selective. SARMs aren't selective, guys. We want to make selective where you're just growing muscle and you're blocking the adverse effects. This is what I've created. Now, next, when we look at the, the cardiac, the echocardiography. Can you get a baseline ECG? You can, but you're so young, you're not gonna have any issues on that. But if it starts picking up in a large heart, you just wanna get the echocardiogram anyway. Now, 
the potential also for understanding your the early early conditions where the heart's remodeling and it's getting dangerous contractile functions disease where it's all silent in the beginning know your ejection fraction should be 50 at least 50 for a young man or 55 or higher something like this mid 50s to 65 or 70. understand your family history in this and also with ACE or ARBs like Telmasartan, they could remodel. They could remodel that potential damage from steroids. We know that there's no studies on it yet, but it's something that we need to do. And I know that I've run it myself and I've protected myself and so many patients, so many case studies, hundreds of them now I have this data, that it's just, it's helped and it's just protected and provided that vector force mitigation, if you will, that adverse protective forces when you're on some steroids. But if you're on tons of steroids, you can you take tons of other drugs to protect? The answer is no. It's probably going to be somewhere in the mild to moderate range. Next, goal for your ABCDs with the C, which is cholesterol. I want LDLs of less than 85. I could support it with the experts at Cleveland Clinic. If you really want to be protected like me, where I had a little plaque and I removed that plaque over four years with my regimen, you want to be less than 70 milligrams per deciliter, even lower, less than 50 is where I live. Now, I think guys like this and Sam, they're not going to want to be on statins. And can you live on a statin so so long to, to maintain your LDLs low enough? And is it damaging to the muscle? Not to mention the cardiac muscle over years and decades and decades. Do you need it? Do you not? So the, the statins are going to be questionable. Not to mention if you're on oral steroids, you can't ethically give someone who's going to take oral anabolic steroids and dangerous for the liver, not to mention Accutane. You can't just give them statins. You can just to a limited degree if you're on if you're on other injectable steroids, and you could definitely do it on testosterone, which is not hepatotoxic. Esters of testosterone. A lot of doctors are not even really sure about this, but I can tell you that it, testosterone's not liver toxic. If you're liver toxic for some other reason, that's a different story. So I like the protection of ARB on myocardial remodeling. I like also the new medications, bempedoic acid, guys. It's going to be great for someone who can't, forget steroids for a minute, can't even tolerate statins, but you need lipid lowering with outcome data, bempedoic acid. Assess the MIBI, also different cardiac supplements. I'll be going into this in the future. I'm making a great cardiac supplement. And I like to limit the aromatase inhibitors because, guys, we know that if you're, if you're on so much steroids, you're just using these just to randomly block uh, estrogen and looking your estrogen levels, total versus ultra-sensitive estradiol, you're all over the place. You can do it, but it affects brain function, depression, sexual function. Real bodybuilders and powerlifters that are strong as shit and strong men, they're scared of AIs for the tendon ruptures, the pec, the bicep, the legs, the whole body. So you want to limit that. And, and that's why potentially, as I talked about up top in the kidney protection with the sodium glucose co-transporters, I think we have other medications like, like, like PCSK9 medications. I really think we could use these medicines. I use them, and I just have a great time showing that I'm strong. I'm 60 this year. I have basically LDLs that are so low in the 20s to no higher than 50s. My brain still works. Everything else works. I'm strong as hell. So you don't need all that lipid and it's going to hurt the heart. But I know it's complicated for you guys and it's not going to be for every single person. It's got to be fingerprint oriented. Next, D. That's my deposition disease. And that's where you have androgen-induced erythrocytosis. That's the red blood cell building up. A guy like Sam, does he have genes for this? Again, that's a family history. Has his red blood cells gone up? What is the danger zone? Now, I can tell you, I've worked with hematology doctors on this for years. Again, it's another area that really has no research on regarding steroid users, not to mention outcomes with DVTs, blood clots. The things that you do see, though, guys, from bodybuilders, 
those dangerous blood clots, pulmonary embolisms. You just have to be concerned for this. So there's really two things, acute and chronic. The acute is the potential for venous thromboembolism, and that's when you look at that concentration of the RBCs and the hemoglobin hematocrit. I would say the general goal is for Sam or anyone else, always less than 18 grams per deciliter, less than 54%. Can, can, should you phlebotomize to keep someone down to 16 and, and, and no higher than 50? It's, that's usually gonna be very bad news because you're gonna deplete the iron studies. So on the that's the acute. On the chronic side, that's where my D is. That That's that overload, iron overload disorder known as hereditary hemochromatosis. People have different genes. They have sickle cell genes, thalassemic genes. When you look at your CBC and your iron studies, that ferritin, that saturation, those iron sat transferrin saturations, there's other, there's a lot of names for this, guys. You need to get on the app and really understand this stuff for yourself. And then you work with your healthcare providers. This is the future. Doing it yourself with great qualified healthcare providers that are on the same page as you. Your doctor's not jumping into your car and coming to your house with a black bag and tapping you and saying, let's talk about your ABCDs. You need to do it yourself. I've developed these protocols, guys, especially D. I want ferritin less than 300, maybe even less than 200, even lower if you have any genes for hereditary hemochromatosis and you have any potential for iron overload. Can you get an MRI and look into the liver and see if you have the beginnings, the trappings of iron overload. I've seen it with hematology doctors, just men on testosterone, getting them off steroids, have genes for hereditary hemochromatosis, ferritins of well over 1,700. I've seen ferritins almost 2,000. I've seen tons of ferritins, 800, 1,100, 1,200. And if you never checked, if you just checked CBC, you're never gonna know it. Now, balancing this, where you don't tank and over phlebotomize and to maintain an, an unreasonable hemoglobin hematocrit, not to mention on steroids and some steroids like Tren, Alkapoise, Decodurabolin, and just testosterone for some men with sleep apnea and genetics, you're gonna go through the roof. And is that dangerous for you? It is dangerous. We know we do see blood clots, guys. We do see blood clots from testosterone on men. You see an uptick in that. After it, it's thought that after six months or a year, if you don't see one, you know it's safe and this and that. But that's bullshit. Because I've been doing this for 20 years for so many men, and I they have blood clots once. It's so multifactorial. They're booted. They have maybe they've been provoked. Maybe they're flying. I have guys who fly in military aircraft that are not really perfectly pressurized, right? So there's gonna be stress on the body, sicknesses. Now you got COVID out there, the COVID shots and all this with DVTs. I know it's complicated, guys. It really, really is. So when you come down to this D, there's no other way to do it. You have to look at your CBC and your iron studies and you have to maintain balance. And that's why the app is really here. And the last part, guys, is gonna be S, the ABCDs for Sam and your followers screening, skin, see the acne, and also skin cancer, but he's so young. You can, start, you can definitely start screening for skin cancer in your 20s, especially if you're a light-skinned person, even not if you're a light-skinned person, and you have sun exposure, just to be safe, serotonin is S, that's depression. Not to mention coming on or off all these different drugs. And I was, when I was reading on Accutane, I saw data saying that Accutane can cause depression. And I went, yeah, I've, I've never seen that. Not in any of my patients, but th there's so much overlap and there's so much polypharmacy. There's so many things involved here. So screening for skin, skin cancer, depression, understanding appropriate family history screening for colorectal cancer, prostate cancer, and things just like I talked about with the heart and the kidney, the renal screening and the heart screening. There's so much you can do that people are not doing. Age appropriate though, guys. And then I have my sleep apnea. Because if you're not sleeping great, that just worsens everything. And then we know depression scores, quality of life scores are just gonna be worse depending on sleep. And we know steroids are gonna worsen all this stuff. Potentially, guys, why do men do steroids? Because they love it. That I loved it. I'm on testosterone and I love it. You just want to be charged. I want to charge up with you guys and I want to give this guy, Sam Salk, 
a pat in the back to say, you know, you're so, you're, you've, you're very successful, sir. Very bright. I think he's studying mechanical engineering. I hope he does it. I hope he doesn't get off the bus of mechanical engineering because he's just going to think he's going to be super wealthy and this train's going to go on forever. I'll bet you someone around him is going to say, you know what? Why don't you hedge the bet a little bit and make sure you finish up school? And he is a smart guy, very smart guy. And he's, he wants to grow intellectually. He says it. I watched some of his videos. All right, guys. I hope you guys really like this. And again, this is not against Sam to criticize. This is an opportunity for me to give great information for a subset of young men that are definitely going to go on steroids and regret it and get hurt. This is a time of progression, and I really hope you guys appreciate it. Let's get the comments, guys. Thank you so much. This is what you get with the Anabolic Doc app. Number one, a digital history and physical exam. Number two, weekly Zoom meetings with me. Number three, discounted commercial labs. Number four, weekly member-only uncensored videos. Number five, Anabolic Doc's mailbag. You can't come to the meetings or you don't want to come to the meetings, you ask a question, I am going to respond to your question by making a video, put it back up on the app and you get to see your own question. Lastly, diagnostic and management library that is easily searchable by keywords.